Hello everybody, welcome into the Truth Serum. Folks, Joey the, the Truth Wagner with you and everybody. It is Steeler Sunday, which means it is time for the Steelers game preview for this week's matchup. And that matchup is a big time one against the Cleveland Browns at Heinz Field. Cleveland 4-1, and one. Pittsburgh still undefeated. And everybody, for the first time, and for as long as I can remember, the first time ever with me watching the Steelers, the Browns and the Steelers is a big-time game between two of the top teams in the league and in the AFC North. Shocking. It's shocking to me that Cleveland... They're actually good this year. They're actually really, really good this year with all of, the, all of the talent they have on their roster. But everyone, before I look ahead to today, let's take a look back at last season. And everybody, the rivalry between these two teams really got heated last November. Steelers went to Cleveland for a Thursday night game. Browns beat the Steelers in Cleveland, and at the end of that game, there was a very particular helmet swinging situation. There was a fight at the end of the game. Miles Garrett hit Mason Rudolph in the head with his helmet. Garrett was suspended for the rest of the year, and that started this rivalry between these two teams that will continue today. Everyone, what's really interesting here is that this is Miles Garrett. This is his first game against the Steelers since the situation. So it'll be very interesting to see how he responds to that and to see how the Steelers respond to that. Uh, I know that during the week it was talked about uh, Cleveland running back Kareem Hunt said that it was a situation where the Browns are going to stick up for their guy and uh, they're going to play for Miles. So stick up for the one who abused another NFL player. Typical Cleveland. But anyway, that's the backdrop to this game. And everybody, Cleveland is a really good football team this year. They are 4-1 and one on the year. They just beat Indianapolis last week. Uh, and Miles Garrett in that Cleveland pass rush has been a big deal. The Cleveland pass rush has been great. Their defense has forced a league-high 12 turnovers because of that pass rush. So that's key number one for the Steelers. Contain Cleveland's front four. Keep them in check. You can move the ball on them. Also, folks, for Cleveland, uh, a key member of their secondary young cornerback, Greedy Williams, is earlier in the week, was ruled out with an injury, so he's not playing. Also for the Browns here, uh, safety Ronnie Harrison Jr. is out. Safety Carl Joseph is out. Guard Wyatt Teller for the Browns is out, as well as linebacker Jacob Phillips. He's also out. Everybody, with all of these players out in the Cleveland secondary, if you can keep their pass rush and Miles Garrett and that D-line in check, keep them off of Ben Roethlisberger, Ben will have time and opportunities to shred their injured and not full capacity secondary. That's the main key, number one right there. And the, here's the second key part of this game for the Steelers. Folks, the Cleveland Browns, even though they have the great wide receiver weapons of Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry at wide receiver, tight ends Austin Hooper and David Njoku, even though Cleveland has all of that talent on the outside, Cleveland's bread and butter this season with their new head coach, Kevin Stefanski, who used to be with Minnesota. He was their offensive coordinator. With Cleveland this year, it's all about running the football and doing it very well, and that's exactly what they've done this year. Uh, that's their M.O. this year in Cleveland for their offense. It's not about Baker. It's not about Baker throwing the ball 39 times. 
because Baker is a turnover waiting to happen. You have him throw it too many times, he'll eventually screw it up. So the Browns have learned that. They have seen that, this new staff, after Baker had 21 interceptions last year. They're taking the ball out of Mayfield's hands and giving it to the running back's hands. And that's why Cleveland's been so successful on offense. Kareem Hunt leading the way this week. A big boost here for the Steelers. Cleveland's number one running back, Nick Chubb, is out with a knee injury. That is huge. So Cleveland a little wounded in the backfield, which is huge for Pittsburgh. As Nick Chubb really dangerous running into the outside. That's where the Steelers are most vulnerable against the run. As we saw last week, Miles Sanders took a carry 75 yards to the, to the end zone for a touchdown last week against the Steelers to the outside. So that's big that Cleveland's best running back and best outside runner is out due to injury. But that's, that's key number two for the Steelers. Stop the run. Make Baker beat you because I don't think Baker's going to beat you. I With the Steeler defense... That secondary and that pass rush. I, I, I don't see Baker beating the Steelers by himself. I just don't see it. And everyone, I'll say this about the Steeler defense. A lot of people weren't happy about uh, the Steeler defense last week. And we'd consider last week a bad, bad day for the Steeler defense. A bad, bad day for the Steeler defense was two picks and five sacks. That was a bad day. So, let's keep that in perspective a little bit with the Steeler defense. They are elite in this league. And everybody looking here, talking about, as I said before, the injury to Cleveland's guard, Wyatt Teller. He's out with a calf. He's out. And Cleveland's center, J.C. Treader, was limited during the week with a knee. So he's not 100%. That's another big key for Pittsburgh. Interior line, not at full strength for the Browns. Watch out for Cam Hayward and step on to it to pressure up the middle against the center and the guards. Get that pressure into Mayfield's face and getting into the backfield against those running backs. Now that's a long, long look at Cleveland. Let's take a little bit of a look here, everybody, with the Steelers. Uh, ben Roethlisberger is playing so smart with the football right now. I love it. My only concern over the years was be with Ben is that sometimes he would turn the ball over a little too much. This year he has fixed that. Ten touchdowns, only one pick. Currently has career highs in, com in completion percentage and passer rating. So this is the most efficient Ben Roethlisberger we've ever seen. And everybody, the, the way to attack Cleveland, I believe, is going to be through the air. As I said before, with their injuries of the secondary. And everybody, when it comes to the Steelers, I'm expecting big days out of two Pittsburgh receivers. Juju Smith-Schuster, I'm expecting a big day out of him. He's been quiet stat-wise since the Giant game in Week 1, so I'm expecting a, a bounce back from him to show that he still has that upper elite echelon talent that we know he has, but the numbers really haven't shown it this year, but he's played really, really well. Run blocking, doing everything he needs to do. Juju's been really good. But I'm also expecting another big game out of young rookie wide receiver Chase Claypool. Everybody, last week for Claypool was his, was his uh, shining moment in the league, his star moment, his holy crap is he unbelievable moment. Uh, Claypool is going to be a star. Last week, four touchdowns, three receiving touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. Led the Steelers with 110 receiving yards on seven catches. I'm expecting a big day out of Claypool. I'm expecting with Cleveland's badgered secondary, a couple of deep shots to Claypool that'll connect. And even Roethlisberger said it during the week. He said, I've been missing on my deep throws. I want to get in sync with that. 
And if Ben does that, look out, NFL. But everybody, the Steelers have two main injuries coming in into this game today. Uh, wide receiver Deontay Johnson, he has been ruled out. He's been ruled out with a back injury. That is a big blow because Deontay is a very good, young, talented receiver. Gets a lot of separation in his routes, which makes it a lot easier on the quarterback. So him being out stings, but the other Steeler receivers are really good too. So it takes the sting out of that. The injury for Pittsburgh I'm more concerned about is uh, David DeCastro, our all-pro guard, has been ruled out with an abdominal injury. Hopefully that's just a one-game thing and he'll be back next week against Tennessee. But folks, that is a concern because Cleveland's front four is really good and, uh, and to miss your best offensive lineman is, is a huge hole there. Uh, We'll see the young rookie Kevin Dotson fill in for him. And in limited action this season, Dotson's been very good as a rookie. Well, everyone, I don't think I've ever went in depth like that before on, on these previews, but deep breath here for the truth. Whew. But everybody, after going through all of that for both teams, in-depth look at Cleveland, in-depth look at Pittsburgh. It's time for my game prediction, everybody. And in doing so here, let me look at what the line is for this game. Just got to get it up here. But everybody, this is going to be a phenomenal football game between two great teams at Heinz Field. Uh, everybody, just to let you know, I will be calling the game live on Hollywood's channel. So please tune over to Hollywood's channel for when the game starts. It's a 1 p.m. kickoff. And it is Pittsburgh by three and a half. Steelers are favored in this game. They're favored by three and a half. And everybody, I am going to go with the Steelers to win this game. It's going to be a really close game. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be a phenomenal football game. Steelers 27, Cleveland 23. I'll swallow the three and a half points. I have the Steelers winning 27-23 over Cleveland because of the Steelers receivers and Big Ben against an injured Cleveland secondary and Cam Hayward in the interior defensive line getting a push on Baker Mayfield to pressure him, to sack him, and to force him into a couple of mistakes. So there you have it, everybody. I got the Steelers staying undefeated. I got my boys get, getting the 5-0, beating Cleveland 27-23. You can book it. Well, there it is, everybody. Uh, what do you think about my uh, score and my, pre and my prediction, folks? I, I want to read what you think, so uh, make, make sure you leave it down below in the comments section, everybody. Leave it down below so I can see it. Whether you, you're going with the Steelers or the Browns, I want to see what you think. And always, everybody, just a friendly reminder, everybody would really appreciate it if uh, you could click the like button on this video. Give it a thumbs up so I know you're enjoying the content. So I can keep doing Steeler previews every week for all of you. And everybody, if you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. Give it the bell so that you don't miss any content that is released. Everybody, uh, enjoy the game. I hope to see you on Hollywood's channel for the stream. Browns and the Steelers to get this week six going in the NFL. Steelers Nation, from the true serum.
Joey the Truth Wagner signing off. Have a great day, and here we go.